Hey everybody, uh, so today we're going to look a bit into, let me just move to my camera a little bit, that's pretty good. Today we're going to look into uh, audio management and, uh, and sound effects playback, music playback, that kind of thing. So I started by creating a, alright, re reload those assemblies, okay. So I started by creating a little empty game object, named it audio manager, put it right there under the game manager. And I gave myself a script called audio manager. I plopped it onto it, boom, like that. Um, and I went into a new folder called audio or something. I put an art. Oh, okay, art audio, audio mixer, and that you can get by right click uh, and create and audio mixer somewhere here when I see it I'll tell you oh there it is audio mixer boom so I created an audio mixer and an audio mixer is how you can control the levels of different elements say let's uh, make ourselves I believe I can say SFX stuff like that let me just verify I remember how this works. It's been a while. You're gonna have to bear with me. SFX and uh, music. Let's have that. Now I'm used to that getting added into here. An audio mixer group is used by audio sources to modify the output before it reaches the audio listener. An audio mixer group, okay, versus, oh, okay, okay, okay. I believe I want, get out, whoa. Let's get rid of SFX. Get out of here. So there's my mixer. Okay, there's my mixer. I believe I want a group. That's what I want. That's what I want. So master has um, SFX. And I don't want it to be a subgroup of that. I want to click on master again and create music. You could then have within SFX like enemy effects, player effects, that kind of thing. If you wanted more subgroups, I'm just going to have that. Um, an audio mixer lets you control the levels of volume coming out for each thing uniquely so that in the settings you can have like, oh, this is what I want my sound effects volume to be at and this is what I want my music volume to be at. Yeah, sorry about that confusion for a moment. It's been a while. Okay, so then in scripts, uh, gameplay audio manager, which I attach to this object, that's what I have right here. I'm going to open Game Manager at the same time just because I want to use the same um, uh, singleton setup, which is here. And I just do this so I don't have to type as much. So I want Audio Manager to be able to be referenced by anyone. And for that reason, I'm going to make Audio Manager have a static reference to itself. Static means unchanging. So anybody in the game can say audio manager with a capital A dot instance and they'll all be referring to the same thing because it's a variable that never changes. What well, a variable that there's only one instance of. It can change, uh, but there's only one instance of it. So public void, or uh, I want to start, boom. Yeah, private void, I believe it's private. Um, so on, actually awake, on awake, so that's right before the start frame, I want to set my instance up. And I should be able to just use the same exact thing. Boom. So now I have a game manager instance and I have an audio manager instance. I don't need this because that is just something that game manager does. I don't care about that. So now audio manager uh, has an instance and that instance gets started up on awake if 
instance is still null, which is what it starts out as, then make me the instance. I am now the instance of this. And don't let myself ever get destroyed so that if there's any variables or anything, settings, I don't lose them. Um, otherwise, if there already is a, an audio manager, that means I don't, I'm not needed. Destroy myself. So we've got that. Well, I'll keep it open. The other thing we might want to have reference to is um, audio mixer. How do I refer to the audio mixer? Google is your friend, everybody. Google is your friend. Audio mixer script unity. It is in unityengine.audio. So I can add at the top using unityengine.audio. Now I think I can say public audio. Now I can, cool. Um, audio mixer. So I might need it. I think I can also play to it without it, but we'll see. Uh, so let's get going. We'll have, um, what are the types of things you'd want an audio manager to do? Public void play sound effect. And uh, maybe public void play audio, or play uh, music. You could also maybe call it, I'm trying to be like, eh, what, what, do I, what, what is most clear? I think this is fine. I think this is fine. You could also add if you wanted, like, is looping, like, should the audio loop, that kind of thing. Um, and now we can start filling stuff in. So for sound effects, we can have a list of all the possible sound effects. A list of all the possible sound effects, and uh, then we can reference that sound effect here. So, I could pop in here and I could say public enum. We've used enum a few times before, like with game manager, and all it is is it's a list of things. Um, it's, a, it's a tie of integer to a name to make it easier to read and understand. So, for example, uh, I want to have a list of sound effects and maybe uh, maybe to be clear I'll call it sound effect types and now this will just be a list of every sound effect I could have in the game at this time that we want to tie into so maybe there's things like um, jump maybe there's things like Uh, player hit, you know, the player just got hit by something. Maybe there's a uh, enemy hit. The enemy just got hit by something. Maybe it's like ugh, ugh. Um, that type of thing. And I don't know what else. Uh, we got we could do button press. How many things you think of? You can add them. You can add them all here when whenever you think of them. And I usually have a default just to like say, hey, something isn't set. And I set it at the top because that means that it's equal to zero. See how it says equal to zero there? So that any default value that you have, um, when you say, oh, I want to make a new sound effect type, um, it will by default be this value of default. And therefore, I can have a catch for that situation. Go, hey, you didn't set something somewhere. Can you look into that? That's why I like to put default at the top. So. We have a uh, play sound effect, and instead of taking in nothing, it's going to be a parameter to say what sound effect you want to play. A parameter is anything that's in those parentheses. So I can say sound effects types, um, desired sound, target sound, um, sound effects type with a lowercase s and not plural. Um, just a variable. It, it could be called anything you want. So, not only do I want um, 
I want to get some audio, and then I want to tell it to play a sound based on this enumerator. So, in order to do that, let's have some like public audio clip. I want to get an audio clip based on the sound effect type. So, get audio clip, and it's going to specifically be the um, SFX audio clip. And it's going to take in the same thing, sound effects types, sound effects type. We're going to pass it along, and then somewhere in here we're going to return, I'm just writing null for now, we're going to return an audio clip. And the way we can do that the easiest, we've used before. We've used switch statements, I think, here. Yep. So in here, I can type switch sound effects type with the lowercase s. Open close curly. And I should, if I click here, I should get the little light bulb. Boom, and I can say add missing cases. And now I have any sound effect that I want to do, I could return something different. So, um, this is where we might want to have. I'm just thinking out loud here. I want to have a way to tie a a uh, specific sound effects type to a specific audio and I don't know maybe uh, maybe I should just get some random audio from somewhere but uh, for now hold up guess need feel it coming okay um Sneezies. Okay, so, um, right, so we were looking at the sound and we're asking ourselves how can we, how can we get a um, sound, an, an audio clip from a particular sound? And the way I might do it is I might make a struct, which is just a container for information, just to make stuff a little cleaner. And I'm going to call the struct um, sound info. Maybe even just SFX info. And that SFX info, it's just going to say I have a an audio uh, a sound effects type, so public um, sound effects type uh, SFX type, and I'm going to have a public audio clip, SFX clip. So this is going to be an audio and the clip that's associated with it so that you can just easily set stuff up. And then now I need to have a list of them or an array. So public SFX info um, SFX info array SFX info list it's really more of an array but um sfx info elements i don't know something like that could be called whatever you want whatever makes sense to you and now when i pop over here and i click on my audio manager i might need to serialize the field i think i do let's pop over here click on my object so he doesn't know his mixer so let's fill that in in case i need it later Where'd I put that? I think it's here. There it is. You do. All right. And I need to serialize those fields so I see it. So here I just write system.serializable. And on the array, because that's the thing I'm actually serializing as a field, I'm going to say serialize field. And now I should see over here a list of info elements. So boom, I can make as many as I want. And, and the idea is I can say, okay, jump, you are this audio clip. Do I even have any audio clips in here? Let's, uh, let's make myself a few. Um, audacity. Whoop. I'm just going to go like that.
Here we go. Okay. Whoop. Ugh. Ugh. So I think I can do a noise reduction. <laughs> Did I? Welcome to the lesson, everybody. <laughs> Uh, noise reduction, that's the thing. Uh, effect, noise reduction. And sure, get noise profile. Effect, noise reduction. Now that I have the noise profile, I can do these settings. I just wanna see these like, all that stuff go away. Let's let's listen to it. Okay, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Get that full clip. Oh, that full beautiful clip. Um, and then can I like file export selection? Export selected audio. Oh yeah, baby. Can I export as an MP3? And I'll call it audio underscore jump dot MP3. Sure. Now I have it. Let's listen to it. Sounds good. I'm gonna plop that in into my audio in my art folder. And I'll do the same for one other file, just so I can test to make sure that it's working. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, export, or, uh, edit file, export, export selected audio. And this is gray boxing people, uh, player hit dot mp3 audio underscore player hit boom you're with me the whole step of the way that did not make sense i used two different two different metaphors you're with me every step of the way okay so i have jump and i'm gonna have player hit boom and boom so now I can find these particular elements and uh, and return them. So instead of my initial plan was to have every audio element like this, like um, public audio clip, uh, I'd have like uh, jump comma jump audio player hit audio and I would just have them all on a list and then down here I would just return like in jump I'd say return jump audio but I don't think I like that because then it just makes this really big so let me just do let me do this and show you why I don't like it you can do it this way if you wanted you, you just like I described you could say jump audio and then return jump audio down here if that, if that makes sense to you but my reason for not doing it is what if I had a bunch of these? Um, a, B, C, D. So let's just say a bunch. Now, when I go back here, they're all gonna take up room, and I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that. But I have a middle ground. I can use the struct. So my problem with this one is that then I have to find this SFX type based on the clip, and that might be annoying. So let's let's do a middle ground. Sorry that we're kind of jumping a bit, but uh, but I just had a brilliant idea because I'm a smart boy. Um, the reason I didn't like the other one is because it looks gross on screen. Um, to, to have to like sort through them all, but if I put it in here, so public audio clip, I'm gonna copy that. 
uh, and I'll call it, um, we have player hit audio, paste, uh, enemy hit audio, paste, button press audio. This is better because now I have a one-to-one -one reference to my audios and I only need one of them, SFX info. I can pop over here and now I have a list of all the audios. It looks nicer, right? You can just do that. So this is an experiment. I haven't worked with sound in a while and I'm like, oh, how would I do it? I think this is how I'd do it. So now we have our jump audio. I'll, I'll put those in while I'm here. Let's go to my U, uh, um, audio. Audio jump goes in the jump. Player hit goes in player hit. And because I don't have anything for the other things yet, yet I'll just put the same ones in. <laughs> so whenever you hit a button, it's going to go, Ugh. Okay, so we have those guys. Sorry for the, uh, for the shifties. But now I don't have to do as much work here. I can say return um, sfx info dot so with a lowercase f s sfx info dot and for default maybe maybe I'll also have a default public audio clip default audio so it can be like eh, eh. so there's just something so you know something's wrong sfx dot default audio jump will return you guessed it sfx info dot jump audio player hit will return sfx info dot player hit audio enemy hit will return sfx info dot enemy hit audio let me know if i do something wrong let me know in the comments below return sfx info dot button press audio. Technically you don't need the breaks. I still like them there for a visual effect, but, but if it returns then you, you can't go on anyway, so you, the, the break is unnecessary. And at the end, if I've not done anything, return null. So now, in play sound effect, I can say um, I can say audio clip A, it doesn't matter when I name it, I could AC equals get SFX audio clip and I want sound effects type to be passed along. Boom. So now that will return me one of these right there. So I can say if AC is not equal to null, which means that I passed along a valid sound type because otherwise it returns null at the end if none of these successfully returned an audio value. So if, if I have an audio value, do something else, do something else. So else debug.log, um, no valid audio given for sound effects type. And maybe I'll make it a log warning so it's yellow. Why not? It's fun. Isn't that fun? So now we have a um, audio clip. So I want to make a, I could either create a new audio element or I could play, um, I could play audio sources all along the same track. So let's just, let's just, I want to look up, how do we normally do that? Play new audio 2D Unity. I just want to double check the proper. I don't want to use a specific source. I mean, I do, but seeing if there's a quick way to do it. Ah, it's probably play one shot. Yeah, sure. So, in order to have uh, audio in Unity, you do need two things. You need um, something to tell it to play, a clip, and an audio source. And at the moment, I can have two audio sources. 
and I could add them here directly, it doesn't matter, or I could create empty children and call one like SFX source and the other uh, music source. And I could shift select both of them and add an audio source to them and probably want it to be 2D, which it already is, perfect. And we can change um, anything we want. We want it to know what its audio mixer is. I don't know why I can't drag that. Oh, it's a mixer group, right? Right. So the SFX source is going to use the SFX group, boom. And the music source is gonna use the music group, boom. So now if you change the levels of the music in the mixer, it'll change the volume of the music here. Um, I don't want either to play on awake, because I'll tell it when to play. And music will most likely need to be looped, but we can do that in, in code. So now we have our audio manager. And open that up. Oh, it's on the other side, other window, whoops. All right, so now we have uh, play sound effect. Play sound effect says, okay, I'm gonna get my clip. If my clip is not null, then I'll get my audio source. So we can have two audio sources here. Um, I'm deciding where I wanna put it. I'll put it above awake. This will be like our public section. I mean, really it's all our public section, but whatever. Um, and we'll call it public. Um, audio source sfx audio source and then we'll also have public audio source music audio did i spell that right yeah audio source and now that'll add over here after you've saved two new slots for hey what's my sfx source here it is Boop. and what's my music source Boop. there it goes in a perfect world you would actually have a pool of audio sources so that if you want to play two sound effects at the same time, um, they don't cancel each other out. Uh, that, is a, that is a danger for this method. Normally what you could do is create audio sources on the fly up to like three or something for sound effects so that you can have multiple sound effects at the same time. I'm happy to walk you through that, but I think this is perfectly fine or, you know, getting your first game uh, done. You know, having a single sound effect. Okay. Do, do, do. So we can play sound effects audio uh, right here. So, okay, if, if I have an audio clip and if my audio source, which we called SFX audio source, is not equal to null, then we can just think in here. Then we can say SFX audio source dot play one shot. And we're going to play what clip do we want to play? We want to play AC. That's this guy up here. So now anybody in the game, when they want to play a sound, they can say, hey, play this sound. Then we're going to do something extremely similar for um, music. And here we go. Actually, I want all of these. So I'm going to copy from here to here, and I'm just going to rename some stuff. So boom, 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 boom. Instead of F sound effects types, I'm going to call this one music types. And you could have, I'll keep a, I'll keep a default, but you can also have... Uh, main menu, you could have gameplay, I don't know, what, what other, whatever else you want to do, you can put them all here. Then on, instead of SFX info, we'll have it be music info. And the music clips that you'll have, I'll still have a default audio, then I'll have a main menu audio, main menu. Uh, then we'll have, instead of player hit, we'll have a gameplay 
audio. And then I don't need those other two. And until I need more music types, just add them here. Just add them here and you can use them. And instead of SFX info, now I have a music info object. And they're both very similar in construction. So similar, you might say maybe I should make them one object, but I'll separate sound effects and music for now. You know, maybe they'll be different in the future. Um, I'll have a handy dandy, let me move some stuff around. I'm gonna move my, my two variables up here. So these are things that are like less complicated, like, oh, it's just an audio source, oh, it's just a mixer. And now um, I'll have down here, we have mainly the SFX info and the music info. Since they don't technically need to be in order of like where things appear, just to make it more readable, I'm gonna have it up here. There's SFX info, I just moved it up there. I'm gonna move music info up there as well just because it's easier to read, easier to read. And then all the, uh, all the other stuff just goes, all this stuff is just kind of bonus material that helps you uh, make these happen. So I think this might be a little easier to read. Now I can pop back down to playing music and I can do the same thing as I have for this. So when I want to play music, I want to get a clip, I want to tell it to play, blah, blah, blah. So I can say public, hmm, public audio clip, what I call it? Get SFX audio clip. So this one's going to be get music audio clip, boom. And I need to return something. I'll start with returning null, so it stops underlining me. And what I want to get, I want to get a specific music thing based off that enum. So I'm going to say music types, uh, music type with the lowercase m. That looks right. I just make sure I don't have any variables that are named the same thing. I don't think I do. Very good. Okay, so hey. I want to get a music audio clip of some type, and it's going to be just like the one above. The only difference is I'm going to be switching on the music type. Boom. And I can even do the same thing where I have the little light bulb. Whenever it decides to appear, I can add my missing cases. And I can say, okay, default, I'm going to return music info dot. And, uh, oh, did I forget a type up here? Let's look. Oh, there's my mistake, music info. Let's go back down here. So now when I type music info, I should actually see my, my uh, music audio. So that, like I got default audio, I'm just gonna copy paste, boom, boom. Music audio and gameplay audio and main menu audio. I don't know, whatever I want. So now we can say play music. Uh, we can do the same type of stuff. We can say audio clip AC equals get music audio clip of music type, which we actually need to include the same parameters. I'm just gonna copy that one and paste it here. We need to pass along some type of music we wanna play so that then we can ask the uh, kind of music library for it. So okay, get us that clip and if AC is not equal to null, then I could um, AC dot uh, play or AC dot Oh, uh, I want to use the audio source, which is up here. I want to use that music audio source. So if I if the clip is not null, then that means I can say music audio source dot play 
uh, AC, that clip that I just got. Oh, it wants an overload. Oh, I think I need to set the clip before I get it. So play just plays the audio clip on one off and the same music audio source dot clip equals the clip that I just got music audio source dot loop equals and I could just say true if you always want the music to loop but maybe you don't so I'm gonna have bool is looping also passed along and have it have a meh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it like this Boom. so Whenever you want to play music, you say, hey, this is the music I want to play, and this is whether or not I want it to loop. I don't know when you wouldn't want it to loop, but um, boom. Now you can just pass that along and then tell it to play. Boom. All right. Um, one more check here in case you forget something. If AC is not equal to null and uh, the music audio source is not equal to null, then try to do stuff. Because if either one of those is null, then you're going to get some bugs. And then you could put an else there to catch it, like what I did up here, but you're fine. Okay, so now we've got our audio source, everything's set up. The only thing I don't have is... So if I go up to audio manager here, let's just make sure all my stuff is set up. I feel like my left side isn't my right side isn't updating all the time. If I need clips here, that's fine. Um, I have nothing in my default audio, which makes sense. Let's pop over here, and uh, I'll just uh, uh, I'll mute this track, and I'll start recording again. Okay, what's main menu? I didn't want it to record over there. Get out of here. Okay, so. Right. So my new track is going to be Okay, so now this is going to loop. Not going to be perfect. But it's gonna loop. Uh, so let's unmute myself because I, it's rec I should have made a new track or whatever, but it's fine. Uh, export, export as MP3. Oh wait, 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 wait. File, export selection as MP3. Um, BG, BGM background music. Boom. Here it is. And I'll put it in my art audio folder here. And now I can drag that over to here. Then I'll just put it in both spots. Man, let's listen to this beauty. Nice. Okay. Um, just so you can appreciate it. Sounds like this. Nice. Okay. So, uh, so now that's gonna we can set that up to loop whatever we want. Eight minutes. Come on, I can do it. Okay. So, uh, let's pop over. How do we trigger this? We music. Maybe I'd want to trigger whenever the game manager changes phases. I don't know. Um. You also probably want to add stop audio, that type of thing here, but I'm not worried about that for now. Um, let's do this. That would be music in Game Manager. Pick up manager or uh, end player. Where's player? Do I have player open? I don't. So let's click on player. Let's look for that jump on player movement. Boom. And not only should I, if I should jump, then set the trigger jump and uh, 
I'm just thinking. And play audio or um audio manager dot instance because it should exist by this point dot play sound effect what sound effect do you want to play I want to play jump so this has a problem of if you hit jump a lot of times then it would technically uh, not resolve it would uh, you'd like hear jump again mid jump because I don't I don't think I have any controls that allow, that stop the player from being able to jump if they're already mid-jump. But uh, let's, let's find out. That should just work. Uh, so you can say play sound effect, uh, and just the same, you can say play music. And then you can make it do whatever you want. So let's me pop over here. Come on. Play, my monster, play. Taking your time. Don't crash. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, see, uh, it's jumping. It's jumping, uh, whenever I click. Not when he actually jumps which is uh, different and the way that I would get around that is I'd go to the animation and with animations you can do a thing called add event so at event here I could right click add animation event and I'd call it um, jump SFX like run run that whatever it is and I don't need to write I don't need any of this stuff and the object would be the player oh, the this oh no the object would be an empty game object you, you could pass along an object if you wanted which could be for example the the sound itself is that right yeah, you could you could pass along the sound itself if you wanted, but um, I the way you do this, I'm a little whiffy on it. Um, I believe the way Unity handles it is so I have an event there that would fire, and then it will try to call jump SFX the method on the thing that it's attached to, which is that the that is the player cube root so I think it would try to do I think it would try to run the event on an element here so for example I would create a new script in my scripts folder I'd call it I'll put it in gameplay I'll call it dang it player animation event handler I don't know something like that and I'll put that on the cube root because that is the thing that has the animator on it and the animator is the thing that fires off those events that I added so like jump will run this specific event wait what not support oh yes yeah, it's not supported because it doesn't see it so now I can say Go to here. Oh, this is a prefab. How do I update the prefab? I think I click on player, apply all. Yeah, okay. And pop in here into that script, player animation event handler. And if I make a public void that name, jump SFX, will it no longer complain about? Let's double check. Go back to jump. Click on this. Now it sees it. It sees it here. It doesn't say invalid because I have a method, a public method attached to the animator's uh, object. The same, so it has to be 
there's an animator, and then there's a script. So now, the, this player animation event handler, you could go through your animations and right click and add an animation events and give them names. And in this particular case, I called it um, jump SFX because I want to play the jump SFX there. So instead of player movement being responsible for this line, I'm going to cut it and put it inside of this method. So now my click doesn't trigger the, the jump sound effect. My, uh, the, the animation triggers the sound effect so that it will only run when the animation has just started. It won't try to run again if, um, if I click again, even if he's mid-jump. So that's why I moved it there. Let's see if it works. I haven't done this in years. Uh, so we'll... Okay. Okay. And I'm going to... Am I still sharing my audio? No. I don't know if you can hear everything. So tap. Tap. I'm going to tap, tap. And we shouldn't see here whoop, whoop. I didn't. It didn't start until he jumped again. Nice. Okay. So that is how you do basic... Um, sound effect management. I guess the next thing I could do is in Game Manager. If I click on my Game Manager, he knows that he's starting out play phase. So when I start my current phase, if my phase is play phase, not only do I load scene one, let me just make sure, start next phase, end the current phase, start the next phase. Um, Close that, close that, I'm just cleaning up. Okay, so play phase, I load my scene one, and then I say audio manager dot instance dot play music. And then what music do you wanna play? I wanna play autocomplete dot gameplay. That's the music I wanna play when I load this scene. And what's wrong? Oh, I forgot to say, do I want it to loop? I'll say yes, loop. So now my game manager from before, which knows when different game scenes are starting, like, okay, the play scene and the start scene, that's where I can add changes to the music. Obviously, that doesn't cover, like, oh, what if I want cinematic music for when I go to a particular location and I want the music to change? Uh, that might be something else. That could be when you enter a trigger volume or something. Um, but to start with, we have this, and let's... Boom. So now I, I should hear Yeah, it should loop. Nice. And that's uh, that's me making terrible sound effects. I hope that was educational for y'all and interesting. And uh, have a great day. I'll see y'all.